Hello, Jeff Zwerink, and welcome back to Science Faith Connection, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas and see how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Joined again by uh, founder of Reasons to Believe, Dr. Hugh Ross, and we're going to be investigating why the universe looks the way it does. Hugh, it's good to have you here again today. Oh, thank you. So one of the things that I have found kind of fascinating in a number of ways is when we look out at the universe, there's the stuff that we can see. And that's a pretty small fraction of what's out there. We find a whole lot more stuff, roughly 95 more percent of the stuff is this dark matter and dark energy. Why is the universe constructed that way? Why did God do it that way? Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, in terms of the stars, the galaxies, the interstellar molecular uh, nebulae, uh, the stuff we see through telescopes, it's only 0.27% of all the stuff of the universe. But what we notice is the visible ordinary matter, the dark ordinary matter, the dark matter, uh, and the dark energy. Each of those must be incredibly fine-tuned in order for life to exist in the universe. So all that stuff, it's got to be exactly the way it is in exactly those proportions uh, for us human beings to be able to thrive in the universe. So kind of flesh that out a little bit. What would happen if one of those might be different, if the dark, dark matter were more or less or something like that? Well, if you were to take the total matter of the universe and uh, make it any less, uh, then all the only elements that stars would ever be able to produce would be hydrogen and helium. You wouldn't get any elements heavier than helium. Make the universe slightly more massive than it is, and then the future stars very quickly fuse all the hydrogen and helium into elements uh, as heavy as iron or heavier. In both cases, you're missing the carbon, the oxygen, the nitrogen that life needs. And also the mass of the universe and dark energy determine how rapidly the universe expands from the cosmic creation event. And so uh, the expansion of the universe determines how far apart the stars and galaxies are at the narrow window of time in which human uh, life is possible. And that spacing must be fine-tuned for us human beings to be able to enjoy civilization uh, on a planet within the universe. So one, of, one often challenge that uh, particularly arises in Christian circles is having a universe that's 14 billion years old and Earth that's four and a half billion years old. It just seems like when you read through scripture, I mean, you know, there's the first chapter of Genesis, humanity arises, humanity dominates what's going on throughout scripture. How can there possibly be 14 billion years worth of stuff? Doesn't that, why did, why did God have to take so long? It seems like a waste of time. Well, it really does. But we need to understand that uh, God had specific reasons for constructing the universe as dominated by length, width, height, and time, and also had good reasons why he wanted certain laws of physics operating. And so the four space-time dimensions, uh, plus thermodynamics, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear force must be fine-tuned uh, for the creator, God, uh, to rapidly and efficiently eradicate all evil and suffering while he enhances the free real capability of humans uh, to express and receive love. I mean, that was God's ultimate purpose in creating. And so we need to understand that Christianity is a two creation model where God creates the universe to be a tool to eradicate evil and suffering, and which is followed by a new creation where we have different laws of physics. In the new creation, nothing decays, nothing dies, because the new creation, there's no thermodynamics, there's no gravity, there's no electromagnetism. But what I explain and why the universe is the way it is, why those laws of physics are critical uh, for the efficient, rapid elimination of evil and suffering. So as long as we got evil and suffering, we need those laws of physics. And with those laws of physics, it literally takes nearly 14 billion years uh, to prepare all the elements that are necessary for advanced life to exist. And even then, our planet Earth is, is at the minimum time. There's really no way you can get a planet Earth with all the elements that it has, the relative abundance of elements, in anything less than 13.8 billion years. So we're here in the physics of the universe at the minimum time 
that we could possibly exist. In that sense, God was in a hurry. Uh, he was pressing the accelerate button all the way. So you're saying that the, you know, thousands of years that er or humanity has been on the earth, that that is uh, working towards the conquest of evil rapidly. But in order to do have that time period be relatively short, thousands of years, God structured things so that there were billions of years leading up to that. Give us yeah. some insight. What, how, does, how does the physics weigh in on that? What does science show that, that validates that sort of idea? Well, the universe begins with only hydrogen. In the first four minutes, about a quarter of that hydrogen is converted into helium. That hydrogen and helium, uh, you know, gas clouds will compress and form stars, and stars will fuse that hydrogen and helium into heavier elements. But it takes three successive generations of stars forming and dying in order to get the adequate elements, the 92 elements we see in the periodic table at the adequate abundance levels so that human life is possible. And yeah, there's really no way to do it more rapidly than 13.8 billion years, if indeed you have the universe governed by electromagnetism, gravity, thermodynamics, and the strong and weak nuclear forces. So it kind of makes sense that it takes a long time to get where we are so that humanity can be here. What sort of evidence do you have that supports the idea that the laws of physics are structured to con have a rapid conquest of evil today? How does electricity and magnetism weigh into this kind of moral idea, if you will? Well, you go to Genesis chapter three, and the moment that Adam and Eve sin, what does God say? Because of your sin from now on, you're going to experience more work and you're going to experience more pain. Ecclesiastes adds, you're also going to waste more time. And uh, the extra pain, extra work, and waste of time will be in proportion to the evil that human beings commit. And it's basically the principle, hey, uh, when you sin, you do damage to your environment. And it takes extra work, uh, extra time, and extra pain uh, to clean up the mess that you've caused. And so that's a powerful motivator for all human beings to avoid evil and pursue virtue for no other reason than to get out of all this extra work, extra pain, and wasted time. We're biologically designed that none of us enjoys extra pain, extra work, and uh, extra uh, time. And so that motivates us, but it also helps us to discover that we need help. We don't have the resources within ourselves to lead a completely virtuous life. We need help from our creator. And that's the whole message of the Bible that God indeed is prepared to trade his moral perfection for a moral imperfection if we come into relationship with him through what Jesus Christ the creator did for us on the cross 2000 years ago. So when we look at humanity, you know, the latest scientific data points to humanity being around something on the order of 100, 200,000 years. Why has, why do you think God has allowed humanity to be on the planet for so long if he's wanting to have a rapid conquest of evil? 100,000 years seems like quite a long time for that. Well, I mean, you and I are both astronomers. 100,000 years seems like a really brief time. I mean, the fact that God's pulling all this off in just 100,000 years, in my opinion, is amazingly fast. And keep in mind that God's goal was to redeem billions of human beings uh, into a relationship with himself. And so you say, why the 100,000 years? Well, it takes that much time to get several tens of billions of people to live on the planet and be able to receive the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as creator, Lord, and Savior. Uh, I can't conceive of it happening any more rapidly. Well, thanks, you again. I appreciate your comments. This has been very helpful and instructive. You know, it is true. When you look through scripture, God has a plan for humanity. He wants people to know him. He invites them into the relationship he enjoys in the Trinity in and of himself. And he set up this fabulous universe that's billions of years old so that we can be here and billions of people can know the love that God has for him. Hugh's written a great book on this. Go to reasons.org, look for his book. It's called Why the Universe is the Way It Is. We'll give you lots of good scientific reasons why the universe looks the way it does and what God is doing and how you can use those scientific evidences to share the love of God with people around you.